located in Sri Lanka, is a part of ISM e-group in Netherlands that has been leading e-commerce solution provider for over 25 years. ISM works for online retailers with national and international e-commerce ambition. ISM also works for organizations that are aspiring growth through B2B e-commerce. We take care of their online strategy, webshop development, webshop design, and their online marketing. At ISM, internationally, more than 400 experienced e-commerce professionals work together on the e-commerce success of ISM's clients. ISM APAC Sri Lanka has been certified as a great place to work continuously from 2018 until now. Hello, I am Priyanta. Welcome to the ISM APAC. Since 2014, Hello, I am Priyanta. Welcome to the ISM APAC. Since 20 competitor in the IT and software development industry and it hosts many talented IT professionals. ISM e Group grew from humble beginnings as a small startup in the Netherlands in 1992 and has since branched out across the world to become a well-established solution provider for e-commerce dominance. I walk into office in the morning with a smile on my face because every day here is a fun adventure. Our state-of-the-art workspace is set out to provide a comfortable and engaging environment to harness creativity and foster its development. The flexible work culture caters to my personality. When I need a break to recharge my batteries, I go to the playroom and challenge a co-worker at a game of pool or play. 
and it will be tough to score. The fact that I can decide how I can get my job done makes the process more efficient and enjoyable. What makes working here exciting for me is opportunity to work with people from around the world. I'm currently coding and developing web shop for an international client and I'm working with a team of people across the planet. ISM APAC has offices around the globe and collaborating with them on such projects has given me a lot of international experience. We work with a variety of state-of-art software such as SP.NET and MVC Technologies. So, let's move on to the session. If you have any question or need any clarification, feel free to ask them using the link that we put in the chat box. And others, who join with YouTube Live can comment their question. At the end of the session, Mr. Himash would answer them for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Himash Jainand. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you, Sudit, for the introduction. Uh, so, like, uh, my introduction was done by Sudit uh, himself, so uh, I don't have to, like, uh, say a lot of uh, about me. So, I'm Himash, and uh, I've been working as a front-end software engineer for, like, two years now uh, at uh, ISM APEC. And you might wonder, like, why there's ISM APEC slash uh, Sano Commerce. Uh, basically, like, it doesn't mean that I work for two companies, uh, like, so, like, ISM APEC is, like, the regional office, and... Uh, Sana is like the global brand for it. Okay, uh, let me start by sharing the screen. Yes, Mr. Yeah, okay. Let me know once you see it. So this? Yeah, okay then. Uh, yeah, so so let's just move on. Uh, so what is React like? Why is this thing like so, as Sudit mentioned, why is this thing like so popular and uh, why is it used in like even, not just for front-end developers, like this is important for full-stack developers uh, nowadays too. So simply like uh, when you go to React website, like you go to the documentation, you see a JavaScript library building for uh, building user, uh, user interfaces. Like, what does that mean? Like, uh, so you you know traditional JavaScript and uh, vanilla JavaScript as well as jQuery. So the thing with this, like, uh, like user, but like developers use this, uh, take uh, like JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript as well as uh, jQuery for a while. And there are like uh, many issues with it once you just, when you like do a full scale uh, applications. Uh, there were like many issues uh, with that. So the thing with React is like uh, React is like uh, this uh, component based uh, JavaScript library. And also uh, notice the word library because like when you consider like other uh, like players, like when you come to JS frameworks like uh, Angular as well as Vue, they are called frameworks rather than libraries. And in React, you uh, call it library. So this is actually like very opinionated because some people consider React as a framework and it's a library. Uh, I mean, like it doesn't matter, but the thing uh, why uh, that uh, like library word is there is like, uh, like when it comes to React, uh, so you can build the, the application up to some level with the initial React. But uh, in order to like do the routing and the forms and things like that, you need to import like other packages. Uh, like you, there are like many packages you can choose from as well. So you got the flexibility to import them and uh, use it on your application. Whereas in Angular, Vue.js, you or like in built, you have like many features that you can uh, incorporate into your application. So still like it's opinionated. People call it framework as well as uh, library. But uh, in the website itself, they mention it as a library, and. Uh, yeah, the second point, uh, it's on the it runs on the client. So basically, it's a front end library. 
like you cannot develop a full fledged application with react like in the sense with the database back end and everything like react is full front end so and the second point is like runs on the client as a single page application so that is like uh, and uses virtual mode term. so that is like one of the key features in react because uh, like if i explain what what is a single page application so you you know traditional multi page multi page applications what you use now so basically like when you click on a link in a website it reloads the page and shows uh, you the page uh, shows you the content in it whereas in single page uh, applications you only have one page and your entire uh, components uh, load loads in that so whenever like you do uh, when you like uh, click on a link or something like that uh, based on that uh, response or like whatever the change you do uh, it basically only updates the uh, component that uh, needs to be updated so it doesn't entirely like load the reload the page but only the uh, components that you uh, needs to be updated it can a what i explain karot it can a multi page wala api then website ekak hadot api link kar kar pages walata hadanawane ehema wenne react wala react wala thiyenne tani page ekai concept ekak kiwa tani ekka page ekai thiyenne components tika thama api click karana api click karot mokak hari page ekak load karanne kiyala page ekata adala components tika load karana nattang mokak hari api karana api mokak hari search karu search karot apita adala tika vitarai load karanne ekenne ekata adala nathi ekenne e api karana change ekata awashya nathi tika load wenne only the changes that needs to be loaded uh so basically that means the app runs faster right but it has pros as well as cons like for one example like uh, the main con is like the like there are some issues with the seo with it but there are like uh, solutions for it i'll explain it like in the uh, later later on in the qa session uh, qna session because i saw some good questions there already uh and yeah the last point the virtual dome Uh, i don't know uh, like whether you guys have like already have a good knowledge about javascript but uh, there is something called dom you know like uh, document object model that basically represent the ui rep- uh, ui of the uh, web page itself so it's like a tree tree like structure that you can like access them and manipulate the uh, website uh, content so in react so in other pages what happens is like whenever like you make a change or like you make a request uh, it basically reloads the entire thing right Where, whereas uh, in react the special thing is like uh, it's something uh, similar to a uh, single page like uh, it has something called virtual dom basically it's a visual representation of the real dom itself and what happens is okay let's say that uh, uh, you click on uh, about us or contact page so related to that you load the uh, what you uh, the address and the telephone number things like that uh, basically it detects that that part is updated so it updates only that part the about a section part in the virtual dom itself and it compares the previous virtual dom version okay not not with the real dom uh, the previous virtual dom version and then what it does is like uh, it detects the component what need, what has uh, what has been updated and only that component will be updated with uh, uh, that component will be like compared with the real dom and that is only updated in the real dom itself so that means like a lot of uh, like uh, it's very it's fast and uh, very efficient uh, way of uh, uh, like uh, working uh, doing the doing the process i mean uh, so moving on uh, so this was created by a person called jordan walk Uh, he's a software engineer at facebook and after like uh, he created this they like he continued to support the uh, react uh, like the source uh, like making it improvement and everything but uh, later on like they adopted uh, react into like every part of their uh, application and they uh, started to use it and then after they open sourced it many companies it's like they, actually a lot of companies use uh, react nowadays Uh, for example like instagram twitter netflix and uh, that means like it's very popular in the industry so like when you compare it to something like uh, angular and vue as well uh, like uh, i think uh, if like react is like one of the best uh, like when it, one of the most popular industry uh, like if not one of the uh, if not the best so like uh, like if people are wondering why whether you should like choose uh, one of the three 
So the thing is, thing is like every every uh, framework has like pros and cons, you know. So React, the thing is like the demand is really high uh, at the moment, as well as it's really easy to like uh, get started with it. Like compared to like something like Angular, like remember the word I told you, like uh, library and framework. The thing is Angular, ha like is somewhat of a learning curve to it compared to React. I think uh, like uh, React is like easy to uh, get started with and view as well. But the only like uh, the view is good as well. View is like uh, best of both worlds. But the thing is like uh, in like the, I think in Sri Lanka, uh, it's not uh, like as popular as other two. And uh, yeah, React is like most popular uh, in the at current market. Okay, uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, what you should know. So there are like some, uh, so that like uh, if they have like any question or anything pop in the chat, like I can't be with like every time. So like, uh, uh, let me know. Okay? Uh, we have all the question in the uh, given link. Uh, the slide. Okay, oh. Yes. Oh. So I mean, like, if they have like uh, urgent question or something, okay, then let's uh, discuss them in the Q and A session. That's fine. Okay. Uh, then uh, moving on, what you should know. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, you need at least like some fundamental knowledge about HTML and CSS. I mean, you can't uh, run a web application without them, as well as JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, the, I hope like everyone at uh, like knows uh, most like most of this stuff. And when it comes to JavaScript, like I wouldn't say you have to be a, like very expert at it, uh, but still like uh, you need to know ES6 features especially because uh, these features are like used a lot in uh, React. Uh, so even if you don't know, like I know some uh, first year students are here as well. Like I'm I'm not quite sure whether you guys know uh, these. Uh, features such as like const let, uh, const let arrow functions, destructuring template strings, they're actually uh, cover more, many more. So I'll try to explain while, while demoing, I'll try to explain uh, what they do uh, like very briefly. So you have an idea, but like if you're getting, like if you want to learn React, I would uh, definitely suggest at least like learn the uh, ES6 features in JavaScript because you, you actually need it because it's uh, like used a lot. Okay, moving on. Uh, getting started. So how do you like create a React app? It's basically like there's a program called Create React App uh, created by a couple of uh, like programmers. So basically like in order, you can't like, uh, let's, let's say it like this. You can not you can import React into like a website like you, once you, like you did, do like jQuery. Like you can just uh, put the CDN links and uh, run it. But the thing is, it's not the best way to run it. And also it's not the most convenient way. So what we do is, I don't know whether you guys uh, heard of Babel and Webpack. So you bundle everything and uh, you use it and it's easy to like, since you know like ES6 as well as uh, like there's a syntax called JSX as well. Uh, that is actually used in uh, React. So that is not actually supported in uh, many browsers. So what they do is like uh, you, you as, as I mentioned Babel, what they did this is uh, uh, it just, uh, just converts the JavaScript into a, a, a code friendly, code friendly name, uh, like browser friendly code. Take a take a convert karna. Ita kotha. Eka me kani hamma browser eka apni issue karna to use karna bolna sir. So the thing is like this config is a little bit uh, difficult. I would say difficult uh, for someone who's starting uh, like React and uh, other web technologies. So what they have done is they have like uh, created this application called Create React App. where like every every configs and like Webpack config, table and everything is pre set up, and you can just uh, like do this, and you can like have a full fledged application like very easy, create a uh, application like very easy. So like if I go to the uh, official website, uh, get started. So uh, you can see that uh, Create React new React App is there. Yeah, so these guys like explain about uh, why, why you need a tool chain here and things like that. Uh, and here, like it gives you uh, the commands that you need to run in order to uh, start the app. Uh, so you, you are accessing NPM here. So you need node installed in your uh, PC. So let me uh, go to the, okay, let's say that uh, this is the folder. So I'm just gonna open it uh, in a text editor in this case. 
give me a second. Okay, I use uh, Visual Studio Code as my code editor. Uh, like th this, uh, this doesn't have to be Visual Studio Code, but I highly recommend it. Like you can even use uh, Visual Studio, like Sublime and anything, uh, whatever you like. So what you do is, in order to uh, get started with it, uh, so like you have to install Node in your computer and then uh, you go to the command line. Let me close these notifications. And uh, okay, so what you do is you call npx. Some people might know in, what npm means. Like npx, npx is like a, a CLI tool, but which like basically installs uh, the app and then creates uh, one for you. But the thing is, it doesn't like uh, install the create React app globally. So what you do is you call npx create React app, and now. Like you can either uh, name a project, let's the, the say my project. If uh, like when you click enter, now, now it will uh, create a folder here called my project and uh, then it will uh, install React in it. Uh, else if you want to like install it to the same folder, you can just put a dot here instead of a name. Uh, in this case, I have already created a React, like I have created a project called React Demo because thing is this can sometimes like uh, install fast, but can take a couple of minutes uh, sometimes. So I just don't want to waste time. So if you're like, work, you can uh, work with me uh, with this. Okay. So, may, uh, so I have like uh, created this React demo uh, application with create React app. And I'm gonna uh, open it with code. In a second, this opens. Yeah, it opens in the other window, so I have to like find it and drag it. Yeah, okay. So this is the uh, folder structure and the app you're gonna get uh, once you like run it. They can overload, create track, react app, pick a hala, we can command a run karam, or I may folder structure, a kick, or I may pick a head. No, I did it was say, uh, one mega put that explain karan and then mona mona the make it in here. So basically, you have the packages in here, like it. Uh, mentions about what are the packages and everything but uh, actually like a lot of packages are hidden from here if you want to like access that part you need to like eject eject the uh, npm create react app, app and then uh, it will uh, show you every config like related to webpack and be able uh, i highly suggest you like not to do it right now because you do it uh, just when like let's say that you are working on a project where like you have like uh, extra like yeah, you do things uh, like advanced stuff or like uh, some customizing and things like that. Unless uh, like this is good to go and for you guys uh, in order like to start uh, React, uh, this is like more than enough. So just don't uh, like eject the app and uh, get it confused. And also like once you eject it, you can like uh, revert it back. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's actually a couple of dependencies shown here. So basically this is, these are like testing libraries and then you got the React. Basically, where we are like every uh, React based uh, uh, things are here. And React DOM, where are like, uh, which is you, which is you used to like, this gives you a couple of uh, like React packages in order for you to like render the uh, app, app itself. And uh, like in, in scripts itself, you got the start and the build. And if you like npm start this, you can load the app. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, uh, second, I think I have another app running in the background. That's why this issue is coming. So the thing is like I was running another app. So the port error is like, uh, they, they are saying that something is already running at uh, port 300, 3000. So I'm gonna run the, run the command again. And then it should uh, start the app. Yes, it's going to. Uh, so, did, so did, like, is there any way like I can uh, like uh, minimize this step? Uh, sorry, Mr. Himash. 
like uh, I don't know whether you guys can see it. Like uh, you can have this uh, tab in on top of the uh, screen, no? Uh, we can see. We can see, Mr. Himash. Yeah. Uh, can you? Is there any way to like minimize it? Like I can't like click the tabs and all. No, no, it's fine then. Okay. Uh, so yes, this is the app. Now uh, you can see that uh, the browser is uh, like loaded. This is. Uh, this local host 3000 port and the app is running now. And like, this is like pre, uh, like this is the stuff that comes with it. So it's, it has its own boilerplate there. So if I uh, explain this a little bit further, like I'll inspect it. Okay. And then if I go to the HTML structure of this, you have this uh, ID, ID root, and then you have a div class app. Okay, so where is this part coming from? Let's uh, go and check. Mm, okay, in, in, inside the folder structure, you can see that there's a source folders and public and node modules. So node module is where like where like npm packages, React, and every other packages are installed. Uh, and in public folder, you can find the index for index.html file there. And uh, this file is the asset. Remember, like I said, single page application. This is the only uh, like HTML file there is. And when I go to uh, like scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a divide root there. And what happens is uh, like, and you can see this in, inside the inspect elements, you can see the divide root there, but uh, from that point onwards, uh, like div class app is rendered. So the thing is only div, this div is uh, there and what happens is like your React applications is but, uh, injected uh, inside this div. And where does the, like that happens in the, like if you uh, expand the source folder, you can go to uh, index.js file. And inside that, let me get rid of this warning. Okay. Uh, then you can see that it imports React, React DOM, and then index, index CSS file, and that app, and some boilerplate. This is actually like boilerplate. Uh, like I'll, I'll show you what you can remove and uh, get started with it. So then you get the render option from the render uh, method, uh, like from the React DOM itself, and this has rendered uh, React uh, dot strict mode. And inside that, the app component itself. So these are components. Uh, this app is a component and uh, they are rendering that app components inside this and you can see that in doc it like catches the document dot uh, document uh, and uh, root root element uh, gets the element and uh, this app component is plugged into it so the uh, you can call this app component as the root level component and like uh, again you, you doesn't have to be called app uh, you can name it as uh, whatever you want, but uh, like like main uh, things like that. Uh, but yeah, like you don't like put all the components here. Rather than that, you put the root component uh, here itself. And then if I uh, get the folder structure back again. Okay, so you got the app.js here. So this is what uh, is rendered here. Okay, uh, so if I go through a little bit so like this might be a little bit familiar to you can any html but uh, like this is not html actually this is called jsx like uh, it's a it's a syntax extension of javascript like you can integrate uh, like it looks like you are integrating javascript into uh, html so basically as you can see like uh, one example is that for this image source they have actually added uh, like curly braces the curly braces means that you're writing uh, JavaScript in it and it uh, loads a logo. So yeah, I'll explain you about like uh, things like this uh, uh, on the go. Okay. Uh, then, let me, okay. Let me switch to the presentation for a moment. And then we did that part and then you got this, okay. So there are like two ways you can write components in React, functional and cl class components. 
So both of these like existed, existed uh, from the beginning, but there's actually something called state, which I'll explain uh, in the demo itself. So what the thing was like, you could only use state in class components and functionals you couldn't because of that uh, class components were used from the beginning. But now uh, there's something called React hooks uh, added to uh, functional components. It's not like added, like in the sense you can use React hooks to uh, like uh, to get the same uh, behavior what you get from class components. Like you, you could do things like state and uh, lifecycle events uh, with class components. You could like get the same behavior from functional components using React hooks. So the thing with this is like, uh, it's like uh, really uh, easy as well as uh, it was like really efficient like compared to class components. So what people do is like they first learn class components, then you learn functional and React tools. And even in the documentation, as well as like in many uh, guides, uh, they tell that uh, we should learn now, now, now itself. Now, uh, like if you're starting a project or like working on a project, like you should do uh, functional components with React instead of React hooks instead of class components. Uh, so the thing is, like I won't be able to like cover both uh, of these in the session. So also, like I think class components you only use like in special scenarios right now. I would say like, uh, let's say it's, let's say it like this. Uh, so there's a company like uh, it, it has some legacy uh, applications, which is written from class components only like then only like you will be uh, needing some uh, knowledge in class components because then you will have to like uh, work on work on it uh, and uh, like do the changes in it. But the thing is like this, these two can like work together as well. So I would like highly recommend you guys if you're like learning you should go functional and react with react hooks first and then like if you have time or like is there like a special need for you to like work on a, a class based uh, project you learn it so the thing is we only going to cover uh, functional based uh, components with uh, like uh, one of the main we on one of the like uh, few uh, react hooks in this session okay uh moving on then yeah like the thing is like i'm not gonna like explain everything in slides the thing is like it's not interactive as well as like uh, you won't like understand it uh, perfectly when you do it like that so what i'm gonna do is i have this very small app it's uh, nothing special actually like you just have you just uh, inside this this is the home view and basically what you show is like the uh, list of books as well as uh, you got the nav bar then things like that uh, so thing uh, what how we refer uh, the components here is like this is the navbar component itself and these are the uh, book list and inside book list this is like book items book item components so like that uh, we're gonna like show the uh, all the book, books in the home page and then you can like add the book as well then we can practice uh, how the form uh, handling is done in react uh, also uh, uh, like whenever like you click one of these items, it will uh, route to this page and it will show the uh, what you call uh, the description of it. And the thing is, uh, like since uh, like this, uh, this, it would be like I I am using this uh, mock database called JSON server. So the thing uh, what it does is it imitates like a backend. So basically, it gives you like a fake API so you can. Uh, fetch from that and uh, get the uh, data in the front end itself. So we like you can use that to like uh, write test app like uh, write uh, test app like uh, this. But like in the real world applications, what you have is a backend like for example like Node.js backend, uh, and you get the uh, you write uh, the request uh, from your front end to uh, that uh, backend and you get the data from it. Okay, uh, moving on to the uh, application. Okay, so let's clean this code up a little bit so we can, uh, I can uh, like uh, tell you guys about a couple of concepts and uh, get started with it. Let me open up the browser as well. It doesn't hide. Okay. Uh, should, uh, then I'm, I'm gonna uh, clean this code up a little bit. Uh, first, I'm gonna get rid of this header and this part. I'm gonna leave the div as it is, and I'm not gonna import the log anymore because I don't need it. 
and also guys uh, like i have this uh, formatter installed in the visual code itself so like uh, whenever like in situations like that it automatically re uh, formats my code so if you like if you want to use that uh, thing it's called prettier like you can configure that uh, in your applications as well because then it will like automatically formats the code for you once you like save it uh then apart from that uh, there's another extensions that you can use called uh, simple react snippets so basically like you can have like short and uh, like uh, short and keywords where like it generates the boilerplate for like uh, develop uh, like giving a small uh, functional components and things like that then so, this is like really easy for you to like uh, get started with it optional uh, like you can uh, just write it if you want it. Okay, uh, let me uh, get rid of these files first. Uh, so this report, Web Vitals, is just a performance-related thing, and setup test is like unit testing related. I'm gonna delete this, and I might get some errors here. Yes, because the thing is, like, whenever you like make a change in the React uh, this uh, files itself, and you would, like save it, this uh, like the web uh, server automatically refresh. So you don't have to like go to the web browser and like refresh it uh, every time. Okay. Then uh, like inside the index.js file, like I'm gonna remove this uh, import statement for report web vitals, and I'm gonna remove this part as well. Okay. Now it looks a little bit cleaner and I'm going to delete the app test as well as app CSS. Now, uh, like, okay, uh, in apps, app.js, like we import the app CSS, so it's an error there. So I'm going to, yeah, get rid of it. it should read or sometimes this happens, yeah. Okay, so let me put the uh, header tag here because then we can see whether it's rendering or not. I'm gonna say app component. As you can see, like that uh, pretty extension does like every, every formatting thing, it does it for me uh, whenever like, I save it. So it's easier like when, when you're like developing, uh, like you don't have to worry about the uh, formatting issues and things like that. Also like you can maintain a good uh, code as well. I mean, like, uh, I think you should uh, use this from the beginning, like in from your university days as well, because code formatting is like really important as well. Like uh, I've seen like uh, people's like, even I used to like code, like I have these lines everywhere and things like that, but it's not actually like a good, a good thing to have because uh, uh, like your code day is like, you, another person cannot like understand your code as well as it's not maintainable. Okay. Then, uh, me just so let's say let, uh, you can see the h1 here and then i'm gonna add the h2 as well now the thing is like you can uh, like put the curly braces here and you can do any you can put anything here like uh, you can do a calculation or you can just output a number as well now uh, it will uh, show now basically inside this curly braces what happens is job like you can make any javascript uh, uh, code and uh, make it work for example, like even you can do mathematical things and uh, it will uh, show up. Okay, so let me make a way, let me uh, declare a variable here. So I'm gonna say const, const is like a constant variable. Uh, so like you cannot like change, uh, once you assign it, like you can't change the value of it. I'm gonna say like uh, sample. gonna uh, show it here so basically as you can see like you can easily like integrate uh, like javascript code into a uh, like jss format so like you it's, it's a little bit difficult in like other uh, like whenever like you use uh, vanilla javascript or jquery but in this case like you can easily integrate it into uh, the app itself and this can be like dynamic as well so if you are like loading some if you want to let load something dynamically like uh, uh, this works uh, very uh, well okay uh, let me two points okay uh, then i'll explain about uh, state okay 
Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a uh, event. So basically you have these on clicks, on submits, like th things like that uh, in JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript. So what I'm going to do here is uh, make a function called uh, handle click. And uh, also since uh, I'm gonna like uh, change this value, I'm gonna change this to let. Let means like you can change the value. Const you cannot. That's the main difference between two. Like you have v, uh, like var variables before. Like in ES6, you got const and let. Const and uh, then I'm gonna say sample two. And then I'm gonna console log the value as well. And also, uh, so how, how how are you gonna take any up? Because with them, handle click up me button make it up. Yeah, element take it bind it. So it it can be done very easily. Like you can uh, like for the H2 element, I'm just gonna add the on click event. It's like that. Otherwise, you like in normal vanilla JavaScript, you have like add event listeners and uh, do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the equal sign. I'm going to put the curly braces and I'm going to say handle click. Notice that like I, I don't use the brackets here because if I put the brackets, what happens is it, it automatically like when the com component load, it uh, runs the uh, handle click, which I don't want to. I want to like uh, like execute it once like you click on the uh, H2 itself. And yeah, okay. okay. Let's uh, make this a little bit uh, different compared to uh, the uh, the title in the top. So you can like easily do uh, like uh, inline styling in uh, React as well. So I'm gonna do inline style for now. So what you do is you put style and curly braces, and you put a uh, you need to like throw a, a object in it again. So you put the object uh, like another curly braces and I'm gonna make the color of this to red. Notice that it's not like quite similar to uh, like uh, CSS itself. And one of the like a major uh, differences is that like, let's say that you want to like change the background color, right? So so what, what you do normally is you write background and then uh, like dash and then color. It doesn't work like that in uh, React. So what, what you need to do is like, you need to mention it as camel case. So background, uh, capital C color. Then it should, it's gonna work. Okay, that's like, I'm gonna revert it back to color. So that's like a very uh, small example of like uh, inline styling in uh, React. Okay, now going back to the console log. Uh, yes. Okay, let's clear it. Let's reload this again. Okay. So whenever like I click on this, uh, like uh, what I want to do is like, like, like uh, you can see that, like whenever I click uh, on the itself, so I'm, uh, I'm executing the handle click and the value is changed. Like uh, the sample is changed to sample two. Like you can see that it uh, console logs the sample too. But the problem is it's not updating in the uh, web page itself because it's not uh, reloaded, re -re rendering. So in these cases, like if you like, let, let's say that you want to like do a change and depends on the change, you want to update the UI itself. So in this case, what you need is a state variable. So how you use state? Uh, simply like you have to use something called use state. So this is actually called, a, uh, this is a React hook. Uh, how you identify React hooks is you use the keyword use before the function itself, because you can even uh, like define your uh, custom hooks as well. And then uh, I'm gonna put the bracket here. Uh, and I'm gonna make this sign to a constant. And inside this constant, I'm gonna uh, like this use test, uh, like returns you a uh, array itself. So what it returns is 
the first index returns the uh, the, the value uh, it's the variable itself so what you can do is like i'm going to say value so this is the value and then what it returns is the method that is going to update that value Okay, then I'm gonna uh, assign this uh, default value as well. Sample. You can like when you declare it, you can uh, add the uh, value here. I'm gonna delete this one because duplicates are there. And also, I'm going to like. Uh, wait, give me a second. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, what you said does is like you set the variable like you define a variable and you put the default value here as well now you can access it uh, through value now you can see that uh, like in my ui like remember like i added the value here and it still loads uh, like st uh, still loads there and uh, what i'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to revert this, this because this doesn't make sense. Otherwise, I'm going to say that uh, I want this to be a text called red click me. I don't exactly how to need to put that brackets. And then I'm going to instead of uh, like putting the value here itself, I'm going to put it to the H1. So yeah, what, what was the value we use sample? So, so sorry, uh, value. So, so sample is the value itself. Variable is the so the state is the value. Okay. Now in order to like update, let's say that we want to update the sample to uh let's set uh, let's uh, add add another sample. Let, let's say the sample two. Okay, so what we're gonna do is going to simply use this set uh, value uh, method you can like assign it like this as well but the thing is you it's it's, it's not uh, like it's not actually like it's not recommended as well as it's not used like that in react so the, this you call these values such as values like this like state is like immutable it means that uh, you should not uh, you cannot like update it directly so you can uh, use the set value method to uh, update the value of this uh, use state. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say set value. And I'm going to assign it a new value called sample2. And this happens only when I click this click me. So whenever I click this, it updates. But like you see uh, in the console log itself, it shows sample because thing is like uh, whenever like you click this this goes here and then it 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 out uh like one once the use state is updated you can use state to give mention can state variable like a they can update a current component i re-render you can make a term about in a power you can put a new part to come i may re-render when i have an update okay Hope you guys understand like how like this is like a very simple example of state. So this is basically like uh, state like uh, state uh, is used to uh, like manipulate the elements in your website. Okay, uh, now okay, let's go to the documentation and look at it. And uh, in the documentation itself, the problem with the documentation is that like in their main concepts and everything, they explain everything in still in uh, class components. So that's a kind of, kind of a small issue there. So when you go to the React hooks uh, session, well, like section is a little bit uh, like down in the sidebar. I think they should actually like put it uh, like a uh, uh, little bit, uh, they should bring that uh, to the top of the list because now like people are actually like using React hooks instead of uh, classes nowadays. Okay, uh, so when so you see this number three using the state hook, and uh, yeah, so they have done the same thing here, and this is actually like the two two uh, hook React hooks that will like you will like use it almost every time. So one is use state, as well as well as there's one called use effect as well. 
So what use defect does is it, it handles the side effects of the component. Like, uh, like whenever you like, let's say that, uh, like, let's say once this uh, value is changed, you want something else to re render in the, uh, like under the, under the click me uh, text, you want something else to re-render. Like I'm just saying like a simple example, like uh, so the, that, that those kind of effect, those kind of, I would say behaviors. Uh, so once you've done, once you like update the state, you want something to, do, to be done as well. Okay, I'm gonna use a use effect here and I'm gonna just explain it by uh, console log first. Okay, so similar to use state, but what you do here is you put a function and this is actually like, uh, remember like I told you, like you, you have to like use uh, ES6 uh, features here. So this is an arrow function in ES6. And since like this is like an arrow, uh, this we, we call this fat arrow. Uh, so this is, uh, since that's the, the, that's the arrow, like you you call it arrow function, and uh, inside this function uh, return, like you can do uh, the side effects that you want. Okay, so for the time being, I'm gonna clear the console. I'm just gonna console log. Use effect executed. So you can see that like uh, in the initial load, it uh, runs and like, uh, remember like whenever I, I click the click me, it update the state value here, the value uh, state, uh, the value uh, state. Uh, I think I should have mentioned, uh, name that a different name because it's confusing one, once you like say value, value every time. Uh, but let's just go ahead with it. Uh, so once you click the click me, you can see that use effect uh, executes again. Uh, so the thing is this, like this code part uh, executes every time once you like uh, update a state, every time the component re-renders, this code part is executed. So let's say that you want to like execute this uh, only at the uh, initial rendering only. So what you do is like, only, not only that, you can like control how this is executed. So what you do here is uh, after the function ends, you can put a comma here and you can put the empty array. You call this a dependency array. Again, a use effect a hammer this same render when a capital navatan the pulwang dependency array ka can up to mention card pull on state values, state variables sticker. Nathan up in empty cock tip both make a kapara crana with the right can make a control and nathaning hata can make execute and make initial rendering a kiddi run and nathaning hata execute and name a part. Okay, so let's run this first. So you can see that it runs. Now, whenever like I, so, so, so like I click the click me and this state was updated, but this part didn't run because it only runs on the initial rendering only. So let's say that uh, whenever this state is updated, you want this code part to run as well. So here, what you do is you mention the state, state variable or any variable that like, it can be something passed to the component itself as well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this value into this dependency. Can I be a value a dependency ka kwitta api mention karna use effect ka eta kota value ka nikang hari update to not use can value update to not can eka venas to not tiyan eka me previous ka natu ven alutta ka set to not use effect ka code ka i run meno. So uh, I'm gonna re-render the app. So it's executed now when you click the click me. Now since we mention it as a dependency here, it's updated it's updating, uh, it's running the use effect itself. Okay, so that's like the basic two React hooks uh, there is, like there are others as well, but uh, I don't think uh, we will have like enough time to explain everything there. So we can like go ahead with this and I'll explain it uh, like uh, this one called use context. Uh, like I'll explain it later, uh, maybe in like in the Q and A session because I think there was a, there were a couple of questions related to state. Okay, 
uh, then let's get started with the app. So this is just a, like I did. A, uh, I wanted like you guys to like know at least what use state and use effect does before I uh, uh, like start uh, before we like we started the start to uh, code the application. Uh, so basically, like when you think about use effect, this the best example like uh, like uh, this example in the sense like this thing that you use use effect for is like get the data like uh, do a fetch request and get some data like you you can basically like then uh, because you only do it once no like you only do it once only you run it again if like if let's say that you search a value if only the search value is changed only you want to run this code so simple as that like uh, those kind of side effects you can handle using use effect in class based components i don't know some people i i know some people might be uh, like uh, familiar with react so they might know like in class based component there are some uh, there are like uh, there's a function called component did mount for like for the same behavior but uh, like they are like there are like several methods to handle the update should update as well here like you can handle everything uh, within uh, use effect so that is like now this is now the thing is like i know people most people here haven't used class class components but this is like way easier to uh, work with work with than uh, class components okay okay let me go to the presentation okay so what so i have already created created the app but, but the thing is like i need to like create it again and uh, in uh, in a understandable way so what we're going to do is we're going to start the navbar area first and also uh, i'm going to update this index css file with some styles of mine i'm not going to go through with it because like this is not the css course uh, like i'm just going to get the css from the file update it uh so the only thing is like you can see the text change because i'm using uh, like a different uh, google font for this okay so like speaking of css like remember i used inline styles so this is basically like you have a style sheet here and what happens is you import this in the index file itself uh, it doesn't have to like be in the index file, but you can like create more files and you can import them in other uh, components as well. But the thing to note is like, let's say that you have another uh, CSS file called app CSS and you have a, a class they are called navbar as well. So the one uh, that is uh, imported later on. So in, in this case app, like whenever like you import something in app, it's uh, imported after uh, the imports in index file. So that CSS is updated by the overrides by the app CSS itself. So that can cause problems. So you need to make sure that if you're using multiple CSS files like this, uh, you need to make sure like you are not upgrade, update, up, overriding any uh, uh, and overriding any main styles. So if you want to like see where this loads in the uh, file itself, you can go to elements and then in the head itself, there should be a style tag here and you can find the styles here. Okay, uh, then, and I'm gonna delete this code, uh, what I did right now. Okay. Okay, so let's get started with the navbar itself. So how you make a component? Like we haven't like uh, talked about that yet, no? Uh, you just create a, New file, and I'm gonna name it navbar.js. Okay, so this this is another thing. Like you, the file extension can be JS or JSX. It doesn't actually matter a lot uh, because the compile it, the bundling and everything is handled through uh, Webpack itself. Like recreate React app is handling that, so you don't have to worry about it. Like if you're like creating a, a bundled app, like your config and everything by yourself, then you will have to like make sure J6 is uh, compiled as well as JS, JS files as well. So the only uh, the con, uh, like the, well, not, not the con is actually a pro, uh, the only advantage you get from uh, using JSX is there are some, uh, like some, uh, I think uh, code editors uh, doesn't support like code highlighting and things in JSX un unless 
uh, you have the JSX format in the file itself. But like I think uh, React, uh, sorry, uh, Visual Code doesn't do that. So normally, like you can go with either way. Uh, I'm gonna go with JS. And also, normal uh, the normal uh, standard is to like create a comp uh, components folder. I'm gonna call this. Uh, components. So this is like uh, some people have like different structures. Some people use uh, different, like depend on the apps itself. They can be like different structures. But for the time being, just use a components uh, folder and put put all your components here. And depending on what what it does, like you can like separate it into uh, folders. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a functional component here. Remember, I told you that I installed this uh, extension to for snippet. So rather than uh, using the snippet, I'm just gonna code it right now. So I can call const, and I'm gonna call navbar. So it's basically a function, like not, nothing big. But the only difference is you're gonna make the first letter a capital. Otherwise, it won't uh, like JS6 won't understand it as a component itself. Otherwise, it will consider it as a function. So you're gonna make you have to make sure you it's a uh, capital the first letter. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, you make it equal to a arrow function. And then uh, also like I can return something here. I'm just gonna say nav bar for the time being. And I have to uh, export this uh, uh, component as well. So I'm going to say export default. So you learn about this export and uh, imports in uh, ES6 as well. So please do look into that. But the default, uh, like this is that whenever you like import it, uh, like uh, you can, you don't have to like mention the exact name. You can uh, like, if you say import this and it will uh, import the, uh, this component that you mentioned as default. So let's say that I say now, bar. now this will be exported. So how can we like access this component from another component? So let's go to app.js. Now I want that to be uh, shown uh, inside this div. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to have to import that navbar component navbar from. Uh, so then I'm going to mention the path inside components. Now like the this kind of uh, like helpers and things like that comes with the uh, code itself, the text editor itself. Navbar. And then like you can use this component like uh, like you, you use HTML tags. Uh, it's how uh, components are like uh, right. So you put navbar. And uh, let's say that uh, you can put things inside these components as well. Like uh, the things that you put inside, you can like access it uh, through the, uh, the uh, child component too. But in this case, since I'm not gonna like put, uh, I don't have anything to put like that. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna self close it rather than like calling navbar again and uh, with the closing tag. Oh, I accidentally deleted the component. Okay, I'm gonna put the app component here so we can identify it uh, separately. So you can see that uh, this app component H1 is rendered uh, from the app itself, but in navbar it's returning us uh, another text. So, okay, so let's say that uh, instead of this navbar, we want this to uh, show another uh, another word. So we can uh, do something like, you know, you can like pass parameters into uh, functions like that. You can pass uh, something called uh, like, you can simply pass properties into uh, components. You call them props. So what, what I do is I'm going to name the prop as uh, value, uh, let's say title. I won't be actually using this, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show it. And I'm going to say this is now bar title. You can either like put it inside brackets or just put it like this as well. Now, okay, so I'm passing this prop now. 
So how can we access it from the child component itself? Uh, go to the nav bar that uh, of a component, and you, this is a function. So basically, like uh, the the things that you pass as props, you can access it from here. So what you do is uh, it comes as props. So if I actually console log this out, props. So as you can see, like I passed the no, navbar title from there, and this this props is console log in the navbar itself, and it's a object, like this props is an object, and it's passing title to me. Uh, we can pass like other things as well. Let's say that uh, description, let's say desk and uh, sample desk. So you can see that uh, it's passing another uh, prop value to that as well. So you can see that like uh, with this type that now this can be dynamic as well. No? So like depending on state variables and uh, like whatever the updates, use effects, the side effects that you do, like you can uh, basically control how your component is gonna look. Like say, like, depend, like depending on a state variable, you can not like, uh, you can even like change whether how this uh, component's gonna appear or not appear. Like in the sense, if you want, uh, if you don't want the navbar to shown, be shown whenever like one uh, state variable is false or true, like something like that, uh, depending on that, you can like uh, choose what to be rendered or not. Okay, uh, so then how can we like use it? So simply this is an object. Now like you can just call, uh, if you want to use the title, you can just call the, props here and you can put title. Now that navbar title is loaded here. Props selling parcel line at a bit of pulling props object thing. Uh, it was a bit of mention color gun. Have I, this is another concept in uh, ES6 called destructuring. Like uh, you can simply like grab this. So basically it's like this now, like you got the Say I'm gonna do this. So what you can do is destructuring what it means like since this is the object, I can put the brackets here and I want this title and disk description. So it means that I don't have to like call props.title, I can like use the title directly. And destructuring a lazy up in a tongue object take up I nested curricle and no not a family and no not a kill him destructuring at the legend of one may have it our shirt prop stick so as you can see like uh, still works now uh, something like uh, another easy thing you can do is like you can eliminate this line as well by putting this uh, object like you see this props right you can put a bracket here and you can uh, mention the object right away. Yeah. And like, this is an error here, and I'm gonna delete the console log as well. As you can see, it still works. Now, what I'm doing here is, I'm not like straight away like assigning, uh, getting the object itself. I'm destructuring it inside the parameters itself. So, like, I hope you guys can understand that because this is something like uh, many developers use, like, rather than like getting the props and like again destructuring it and using it, you can just directly like use it from here. Uh, there's another thing called prop types. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit. It's the optional thing, but uh, like it's something useful as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put import prop types. This comes inbuilt with React itself from prop types. So this basically type checks uh, whether what uh, prop whether we can like say that whether I want this this prop needs to be a string. If it's not like show error, it doesn't like show error in the production build or in, inside the code. It just shows error in the development build inside the console. So like if you are like having any uh, if you are like checking or like it can make 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 your code uh, like uh, if you are like having an error or something like that, you can easily find the error from that. And like, I don't know whether you guys know, but uh, if you're using TypeScript, like you don't actually have to like use prop types because that doesn't make any sense because TypeScript, TypeScript uh, itself is doing the type checking. 
Okay, so how you uh, assign prop types to this? Okay, so I'm gonna say Nava and uh, prop types, simple prop types. The simple prop types in the game, the P has to be simple. Then I'm gonna assign this to an object and I'm gonna mention oh no, to object. I'm not quite sure about that. Let me check the prop types. I don't remember whether it's uh, prop types react. So you get this article here in uh, type checking with uh, prop types. So basically, yeah, it's an object. I remember like you put the bracket before the uh, prop types. So what you do here is like the props that you're passing, you can like check it like title. I want this to be a prop types strings string. So what have like what happens is like from like checking this like let's say I'm passing a number instead of a, a string here for the for the title. And I'm gonna say it's title. I can directly use integers here, so I have to like use the brackets and then uh, use it. Now you can see that like it shows an error in the console itself. Like I'm gonna re-render this. I think only one should only show one time. Yeah, it says that invalid prop type, uh, like invalid prop type for title, and it should be like it says that uh, number is passed instead of a string. So like this is an optional thing to do, like uh, prop types thing. But like uh, in best best practice, you normally use it. But uh, like like if you're using TypeScript, you don't have to. But as a best practice, you should uh, actually like uh, use it. But you might not see me actually use this uh, in every component, uh, like when I'm uh, doing this development, because uh, like like it takes time, and as well as uh, like as a as a best practice, just keep it to yourself. Like you, you use it every time that you have the time. Okay. Uh, then let me look into the app that I built because I don't remember the elements. Okay, then, uh, so I'm gonna delete these props because I won't be uh, passing anything to the navbar. So I'm gonna delete this part from here. And this as well. So the structure is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a nav. And how you mentioned class? So in normal HTML, you just mention class and you just put the uh, class name here, right? Class uh, here, right? But in React, you cannot do this because the thing is, uh, class is a reserved keyword in React. So you have to use, instead of class, you have to use class name. So that is like a rule in React. You can't use like, if you use class, it won't work and it will show error like this. And then I'm gonna say H1. Now the thing is like uh, it's already styled. Remember, like I put the uh, I put the, the styles here, so it's already styled. So uh, don't worry about that. I'm gonna put a div here as well. Class name. Thanks. And then I'm gonna have the links inside this. So I'm just gonna go with anchor text for the time being, but we will change it. I will explain why. So this is where the uh, create button will create will be so I'm gonna say new book here okay and also I have to apply a class here called uh, create okay uh, let me delete the app component title as well because uh, it doesn't look good with that Okay, uh, one more thing. Uh, in React, like when you're like returning a component, it needs to be like a single component. Sim uh, it needs to be structured in like it only should only contain a parent element in the sense, uh, 
like now you can see that it returns this nav right with the nav tag like i'm going to include another h1 here it's already showing error so what the problem with uh, like this way is like it, you need to return uh, like only one element one element in the sense everything needs to be wrapped in uh, a div so what you normally do is it, it needs to be wrapped in a parent element so it doesn't exactly have to be a div they, like you can actually put a div here and then you can put everything inside that but like this can uh, yes this works but the thing is let's say like in styling uh, related stuff like you want you don't want this div here because uh, it breaks it, it messes up with your styling so what you can do is react has this uh, thing called react fragment so it imitates it like basically wraps around the compo with the elements but the thing is it does not uh, show up in the uh, uh, show up in your uh, elements itself so let me actually get the elements so if i inspect this you can see that they, now there's a div before the nav bar right i'm not like putting this in the app uh, so if i put the fragment here how you can uh, simply like remove the div and you can put this uh, tag here and with the closing tag as well now with this like when it re-renders like you can see that there's no div uh, but like it still returns nav, nav bar and uh, heading so now there's no issue as well so if you are like if you want to change uh, like send uh, elements like this you need to make sure that you wrap this with the uh, react uh, fragments okay i don't want this title so i'm going to delete that all right now okay let's let me like go back to the app a little bit okay now i did this part as well okay now let's just since uh okay let's code the home uh, part first now if so i have to make another component right like uh, in order to like show the home component i'm going to uh, create a component called home here home.js and now i'm going to actually use the uh, that uh, snippet i told you because i don't want to like type it again and again so you just uh, this extension you just call sfc and you tab it and then it will automatically like uh, do the boilerplate and you can just only add the name this uh, other uh, like extensions which can like even create the, the component uh, based on the file na name itself you can like check it out uh, yourself okay for the time being i'm just gonna add h2 saying home And yes, this is not rendered in the app itself, so it's not showing. So I'm gonna add it here. Uh, also, I have this uh, extension for auto importing as well. So whenever like you have a component, uh, you can just, it simply like mentions is the helper. So whenever you like click it, it automatically imports for you. Uh, if you want to know what that is, uh, it's called, uh, where is it? Auto import. So this does that for you. You don't exactly have to like, le like it's like this, like if you're like starting out, just you should code because then it will uh, be a uh, good practice for you. But like once you're like in, like when you're actually developing stuff, like time is like the essence. So you need to like do to use tools like this. Okay, uh, home. Let me look into the, my sample application. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a div. Costing here, and I'm gonna have a class name called uh, home. And I'm not gonna have any text here. Okay. Now, remember the in the presentation itself, I show you a couple of uh, screens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna like show the uh, books so books here, like load every book uh, here. The thing is, uh, as for the back end, I told you I'm gonna use a mock back end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy like two files here. I'll explain what them is uh, after this. File itself is it's like it's a folder. So uh, it's a folder called data. 
doesn't have to be called data, but I just call it data. And you put uh, this file called db.json. So basically, this file is in JSON format. And what this does is this basically creates you a, a mock API for you to like uh, like use it in uh, like uh, practice apps like this. So what you can do is while this is running through the terminal, you can open up another uh, terminal here from the plus itself. Then I have to write a command in order to run the uh, JSON server in order to like uh, have this uh, just uh, like uh, the mock, mock uh, database. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say MP, npx JSON server. You don't have like import, you can install this as a NPM package as well, but this way it's easier like with npx because it installed the JSON server for the instance only and uh, it does the uh, work for it. And I'm gonna call watch as well. But watch this is like whenever like I make a change to this uh, db.json file, it automatically reloads. And uh, watch as well. then I'm gonna mention the file. So I'm gonna say data and then db.json. And after that, I'm gonna mention the port as well because I think the default port for this is 3000 as well, but we are running React on it. So we need to mention a different uh, port for it. Uh, port. I'm gonna run it on 8,000. So while it runs, uh, I, want, I want to show you guys how we can go through list, like how we can render list content. So let's do something like this. I'm just gonna copy this array i'm gonna go to the home and then i'm gonna add it here just as a constant like not a state variable i'm gonna say this is uh i'm gonna say this is books json survey is running so if i go now this is while this is running like it shows the resources and everything so if i go to one of these like so now, you know you can see like the data i mentioned there it's appearing here also like i can even add, add data to this as well as delete data from this and this file dbjson json file will be updated so this is like really cool like if you're like if you want to like work on something as a like a practice do some practices on it like this is uh, really useful so okay uh, before like fetching the data from the uh, that uh, api itself I'm gonna do it uh, like I'm gonna hard code uh, it so it uh, you, you guys can understand it easily. Uh, then you got the books here, and what I'm gonna do here is so this since this is an array, like you can uh, map through it. Map is a method in JavaScript. You can like loop through the array, and uh, you can uh, for each item for each object here, like you can uh, like show an element for it. So in the sense, uh, list. yes. So what I'm gonna do here is set if yeah. Before the div, let's uh, create the map first. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say books like the constant books. Then I'm gonna put dot and then map and then then it, it will give me each book. You can one book like a loop map karabuga mata the kin neka eka loop pala mata elliot than the bottom mata no book ekena. Say from that you can uh, put the arrow function there and it, like you can access the book through with it. So accessing in the book itself means like you can access these properties. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna put a div here. And then I'm gonna have a class name as well. I'm not, I'm not sure whether this will mess with the styles. And then, so if I go to the app, there's one more thing that uh, I need to show you guys. So 
there's a warning saying that each child in a list should have a unique key prop so basically thing is this you need to include you need to tell whether this is like a unique a unique thing so what you have to do is like inside the loop itself like in the first element you have to mention a key for it so what you can say is key now, now since like we are, we have a, like we are assuming that we, we we like we getting the id here so we can put the book since we are like looping through it you can get you can access individual books from it so you can say book and then id and i'm just going to show the book uh, title as well like now you can see that in the front end so those two uh, text are appearing like uh, yeah now Yeah, so I have to wrap these in anchor tags. Yeah, no, let's just not uh, wrap it right now. Let's just wrap it in the end. So for the time being, I'm gonna put H2 around this. I'll just copy some code from the sample that, that I did. So what I do here is I'm just uh, showing the title and the author. So this has to be clickable. I'll uh, do that uh, later on. Uh, for the time we know, we can actually like, let's just include the anchor tag. Yeah, let, let's just not do it right now. So what we're gonna do is this should be clickable. Once you click it, it should uh, return to this uh, details page where like uh, details for it should be displayed. Now, like you can see now easy, like we can uh, map through books like this. Uh, then also, yeah, one more thing I have to wrap this. It's basically like I have like created the sample app, like I need to like have the same structure because otherwise styles will uh, get messed up otherwise. So because of that, I'll, I'll have to go with like this. So this. Okay, now, now like now this is actually static, no? So rather than like getting it uh, from like this, we can, uh, let's, write, let's write a fetch uh, request and get the data from there. So what we can do here is uh, we can mention books as uh, state itself. So what I'm gonna say is use state. And gonna have to mention whether the books is books and then i'm gonna say state this i'm gonna comment this code for the time no yeah i'll comment this because i will get a couple of issues because if, uh, i'll import you state as well okay state is not defined okay now it's all right now what i'm gonna do here is now remember like uh, we have to like a major ma make a fetch request to the books itself like since json server is running we can make a request to this url and you can get the data from there so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna make a fetch request inside the use effect and then after that data is received, I'm gonna set that data to the state variable. And when that state variable is updated, I'm gonna loop through it and I'm gonna show that uh, list. So we can uh, like one can data take a load the line account up to pull like a loading message. Okay, we get that capital pin on the pull on me. You are okay. State variable like a picker may use color. I'm gonna say use effect. this and also i have to uh, like so wait let me just put the dependency array for the time being empty dependency array and what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna write a fetch request you can either like you, the fetch is like the inbuilt uh, http request uh, like client that you can use you can like use third party stuff like axios as well 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fetch URL. And this is basically promise. Promise is another feature in uh, ES6. Basically like uh, it uses for like async stuff. Uh, it's somewhat like, I, I would say like it's somewhat advanced. So like, uh, please do check it. So what it does is like, once you like uh, get the data, then you can like uh, chain it. And then if there's an error, you can catch it and you can throw an error. Otherwise it will chain it, uh, chain it uh, like for the commands that you have. Uh, okay, so then what I'm gonna do is then, and it will give me a response. And uh, I'm, I'm just gonna call, uh, get some code from the uh, application itself because otherwise it will, it's taking too much time. Okay. I'll just come copy the entire then otherwise it's, it's showing some errors. Okay. Okay, so it says URL is not defined. Okay, so I have to make, I have to uh, write the URL here. Uh, so it's this. And then like uh, what, uh, like briefly uh, explaining, like uh, you can check whether the response is okay. If it's not, you can throw error. Like there's actually many like error checking to be done. This is only, this is uh, checked here. And after that, uh, we need to make the response into a, a readable format. So you just uh, uh, put the uh, dot and JSON uh, method, you run the uh, JSON methods and it will return you uh, the data. Uh, then what you can do is, after you can put another then. As I said, like you can chain uh, commands using promises. Please do check it uh, if, if it's confusing. Uh, yeah, it, like if you're not uh, like haven't used use ES6 and it might be. And also you have a catch as well. Catch will return an error. And then I'll do that. So inside this then, so I'm, what I'm getting here is data. I'm gonna say this data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set state this. Uh, set state, set state rather than state state, like uh, let's call it data. Set data. So I'm going to assign this to uh, data. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do. Yeah, now we can uh, uncomment this. Since this is data, we can assign it here. Now, it should throw an error, yes. Which... Okay, so the thing is this, like at the initial rendering, this data is not loaded because uh, at the initial rendering, like it just it runs everything and like, uh, like this use effect part is executed like uh, after the initial rendering. So what you have to do is we have to check whether this properties like this data is available or not before looping through it. So what we can do here is, uh, this is what I'm using here is a logical end operator. So what this does is, it checks whether data is there and uh, if it's there, it will execute this data with this code part, the code part after the double length. If it's not, it's not gonna execute. So like similar to, the, to, to this, there's another uh, operator called turner operator where like you can write inline uh, uh, if, uh, if else. So basically these things are called inline uh, logical operators. So for example, uh, the if, kind of if else works like this, you just uh, put, data and then question mark for if, if data is there, you can execute something. If uh, like, let's say it's true. And uh, if it's not like you put a call on there and you execute the code uh, in for the false statement. So that is like how you do uh, like the conditional operators. So I'll just revert this back. So 
also like one more thing i can uh, so it's like this i'll include a set timeout uh, i'm going to wrap it with the set timeout so what that's going to do is like in actual applications it takes time to like load the data no like you can appear the make wage manata mehe menna me code ekane details deka anything if server la speed da dekka samala ara time ekana godak kela ara data tikenda ite apita e welata karanna puluwa apita nikan loading message ekak nathan loading icon ekak apita pennanna puluwan e e welawata ara eka nisa like i can what i can do here is uh, i can uh, mention uh, another state variable called e spending okay so that what that this is so we initially uh should we mention this as null as well i forgot to do that you don't exactly have to but uh, it's better to like define a, a default value so since this is null it automatically like uh, falls here and you have to like check that and then uh, run the loop and yeah e spending you can have a default value of true okay, so what we're going to do is if is is e spending same thing I'm gonna do is uh, let me copy that data part as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna simply say div. Loading. Now that loading is uh, like shown here itself, but uh, like we don't. Uh, want that to happen uh yeah so what we going to do here is like uh, after not after uh like after before like setting the data we can make this set is pending a uh, false let me add the set timeout as well then uh, we can see the loading message before data load okay uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap everything in a set time out i'm going to put 1000 milliseconds here and i'm going to copy this fetch command So what that's gonna do is like since doesn't matter like since we are like uh, putting 1,000 milliseconds here, it will uh, like show loading for one second because it uh, like to show like there's a delay there, and after that it will uh, show the data because in the fetch request is the itself, it's, sim it's very simple like what we do is the initially it's true is pending. But uh, like when, whenever like we get the data, we just set it to false. So that means it will hide uh, since the uh, this condition will be failing from that point onwards, and it will show the data. So that is basically a conditional rendering for you, like uh, in React. Now, uh, let me go back to the points. Okay. Also, like think uh, like we have to like okay. One more thing, I I didn't handle the error part there. Uh, I'm going to use state for that as well. And in this part, uh, in the error catch error as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set error here. If there's an error, I'm going to set the error, and you get the message. This error object returns you the message, so we can like this is very meaningful. Otherwise, it will be like a huge uh, as I remember object. Uh, so also I may put the e spend into false as well. Otherwise, it will the error message will appear with the loading. In an error because it's not properly formatted. I'll delete this. Yeah. 
yet I'm missing the bracket. Okay. Now let's say we the wrong yeah here. Four four eleven. Okay. So that part is actually not functioning right at the moment and uh, I don't actually have the time to like debug it and all because a lot of time has passed. So let's do like this. Yeah, it's not working because I'm not showing the error here. So same thing, I'm just gonna put the error. And like yeah, as you can see, like uh, it's always showing here. So what we can do is we can set the error, error to null after we set the data. Okay, so whenever like you do a wrong request, oh, it should show like that. Basically, if they, since the error is fired, like now we are setting the error here and we are like getting rid of the loading message and uh, it will, it's showing the error message because we are conditionally rendering it here. And now quickly, we're gonna do a, something called custom hook in the sense like, uh, let me get, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Just gonna delete this. Okay. Okay, it just messed up with my structure again. Okay. Uh, here, like uh, you can see that now we got, we will have to use this uh, fetch request like in several places. Places. So what we can do here is we can uh, uh, add this as a like a custom uh, React hook in the sense we want to reuse this rather than. Uh, Use it again and again, this same code part, just to like get data. So what we can do here is, uh, what I'm gonna do here is like, I'm gonna get the uh, component from the, uh, the reusable component that I created and I'm gonna paste it here. I'll just explain uh, what it does because the thing is uh, time is passing by. Uh, okay, so what I have done here is, so so this part we can actually like extract into another component, like a React hook. Hari, the what a bit pulwa me part tega execute karana venam React hook kega. The what a bit of pulwa ape then then conditionally ape attra me abando ne ape URL ke vitra. Or the ape kani ape the venas fein ega vitra na nitti ko kome kai ni data tika gani thi. Ape it was a king a val a king rande la ina value stick ape return karagan vitra thi. So in this, in that case, what we do is uh, we create a use fetch file in the sense like you can make you can name it whatever you want, but you need to include the use keyword to make it uh, uh, make it recognizable as a React hook. So what I've done here is it's basically the same thing, like with the states and everything, but we pass the URL as a prop, and then we set the uh, URL uh, as the fetch uh, like uh, the if uh, the uh, the URL. So, and also what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put it as a dependency as well. So, because we need to run this again, if this URL changes, uh, then we're going to return the, the data and is data is pending an error from the React uh, hook itself. Uh, so, how can we like use this one? So, in the home itself, I'm going to copy some, I'm going to replace this code. Uh, also, I'm going to add another component here as well. 
called book list. So what book list does is, so when you go to the, like, let me go back again. As you can see, like this code part, this uh, data, uh, this, this code part is like, we can actually use this as a separate component rather than say, using the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to co copy the code for a uh, book list component. Just ignore the errors for the time being. Uh, then I'll comment some of the code here because I'll explain it later on because it's related to the, uh, okay. Should technically, now I'm going to replace the home as well. Okay, now, like in the home itself, what we do is like a couple of simple things. Like remember the use fetch, like what we're doing here now is we just call in the React hook and we are passing the URL to it. Remember I said like in the use fetch itself, we can get the URL and uh, pass it to the fetch request. Now this is completely reusable. Like you can simply use the same thing in, an, in other components and you can uh, get the data from the uh, API. So that's like the power of like uh, re reusable uh, React hooks. As you can like do the same thing with uh, like you can uh, think about components in that way as well. So then here, like in the books book list, I didn't explain it. So book list, what I've done is like simply I get the books array here, like the the books that needs to be shown, and I'm going to uh, map through it, map through it, and uh, show the uh, show every element. So this book list component will be rendered here in the uh, home component itself. So remember we like check whether books are available and then we uh, render the books component passing books as a prop. And now since now these parts are like uh, handled through uh, the React books itself. And also about the, the, remember like through the use fetch we are passing data but here we can actually, this is another feature in uh, ES6. We can uh, explicitly uh, mention, uh, like we can rename it to books itself. Like it's meaningful rather than saying data, we can just say, uh, assign a new name for this. All right, uh, let me go to the points that I need to know. Okay, now, Okay, now let's, uh, I'm gonna stop the application for a bit because I need to actually, now now let, like, remember like we have links in the navbar, so we have to make sure that uh, it navigates as well. So when it comes to navigation, uh, like we can include a package in order to uh, achieve that. Okay, so this is, Close and I'm gonna switch the node to the video somewhere on I have to close this. And then there's a package call. Uh, I'm gonna install it. Uh, there's a package called React Router Door. So you use this to, uh, so you can uh, get some components related to use uh, from it and then you can link uh, wherever like you want the route to be and uh, it will uh, do its work okay so while it installs uh, we're gonna have to make the apps here. So we're gonna have to uh, import the packages of it here. I don't know whether there's an error or something like this stalling. Okay, it's installed now. So we're gonna have to import a couple of packages from it. So I'll copy the import statement. So we're gonna do that, the routing part in the app itself. 
since that's like the root level. Okay, so the components that we're gonna uh, like uh, get from React Router is uh, React uh, Router, like it's browser router, but I'm gonna name it as router. Like you can put a name, like you can put as and uh, like you can put a, give a name that is like uh, more meaningful for to you. Then uh, route and switch. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I'm going to run the app again because I stopped it. So what we're going to do here is we have to wrap this uh, whole application with the router component. So call router and we're going to put the div inside this. And then uh, still works, but uh, with the styling itself, like you now it's a little bit messy. Uh, so what I have is inside the app, I have to actually after the nav bar, I need to make another div because I have some classes where the contain and content is loaded. So I'm going to put class name. And then uh, what I'm going to do is remember another component I imported called switch. And inside that, inside that I can mention the route paths. Okay, so you can say route. And then as a prop of it, I can mention it as path. And then dash. So this is basically the home route, right? So what I'm going to say is for the home, I want to I want it to load a home component, right? So what I want is like whenever the browser loads uh, the index, I want it to like uh, load the home components. So it's happening right now. Also, this hub effect is coming from the CSS itself, so don't worry about it. Uh, then uh, I'm going to have some other components as well. So we're going to have a create component. I'll just uh, copy the create component and uh, like include it here. I'll explain uh, everything in here uh, in a bit. So what we can do here is uh, in the app, I want to now, uh, whenever like you click the new book, I want it to go to another page, right? In the create a new book page. So what I'm gonna do here is, scale route and path. I'm gonna mention it as create. Now, remember that like, uh, uh, we included the, uh, let's just create, it's gonna import the command, uh, the component again, and react create component is imported as well. Now, it's not working, right? Like, uh, like let's, we're in the react, we create uh, path, but it's not working because uh, this route, like since we have the, uh, this basically like looks and matches with the path we give. So basically since the dash is there, like even if this is dash create, like like whenever like the, like since the dash is there, like it looks for the first uh, like letter and since it's dash, it just goes to the home component itself. So here, what we can do here is we can either like get this route uh, like up, up, up in the sense like we can put this uh, this route down and the, we can put this up but instead we can say exact exact means 
needs to be exactly this dash otherwise it won't uh, load so in the sense if you go to home now the home component will load i will explain what hap what's happening in create uh, give me a second so another thing i want to uh, highlight is this so if you inspect this is an issue now and i'm going to go to the navbar component as well remember like navbar component like we created in the early stages yet we have like anchor tags here right so we uh, dash for the slash for the home and slash create for the uh, new book now so whenever this loads this loads a bunch of uh, javascript and then then we click new book it goes to create new book and like it loads everything again but uh, so that that goes from the uh, concept that we uh, go because we want this only this component to be loaded not the others so what we have to do here is there's something called link like instead of using anchor tag we have to use a component called link in uh, react so basically uh, you can import it from react router dom so instead of using anchor tag you have to use link component and i'm going to replace this It's basically like putting uh, anchor tags as well in when you like uh, inspect it through element, but uh, it has its own implementation, so it uh, does not uh, like reloads everything again and again. And I'm gonna have to import this too. And from React Router DOM. Okay. Now. It's not defined. Yeah, uh, we cannot use now. Now, now, href does not work. We have to pass the uh, pass it pass a prop prop call to instead of uh, href. Now let me reload the app again. Now it initially loads everything. Now whenever like I go to new book, you can see like th there are some couple of few requests, but it didn't load the entire app. Let, let me do that again. I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna reload the page. Everything will be loaded. And whenever like I go to new book, it doesn't reload like the last time. It will. It's. Uh, it has a, a request here, so that is why it's appearing. Uh, I'll show you what that request is. Okay. So that that is for routing. Like uh, you have to like add the routes and uh, route and paths and he paths here and the components that you need to show. And uh, in the links linking parts, you have to mention. Uh, you have to add links and uh, into the tools you can uh, mention the route paths uh, itself. Okay, uh, before going to the add part, I'm gonna create the book details page as well. So once you like click this uh, book item, you need to like go to another page, right? No, let's, let's just go finish the create part first. I think that's uh, way easier. Okay. So basically I had to copy this thing because I think if I like, uh, do this uh, from the scratch i think it will take another lo lot of time so i'll explain what what is happening here uh now so we are using use effect and use state we are having a couple of use state here so we want to enter book title description and book author right so in react like in uh, html forms we cannot simply like uh, write the inputs like this import like this and say uh, and uh, edit uh, like, like 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 working work on it because we have to maintain the value of what have uh, what uh, value of input uh, in the state uh, let me actually come in this code part first i think i'll have to explain it uh, for one input otherwise you won't get it okay uh i'll just okay 
Okay, just ignore the commented code, okay? So imagine this thing only has a title and a text box book title. So the thing is traditionally like uh, we can, I'm gonna, you won't have, you won't have even this as well. So whenever like you submit the form, so we use the events on submit for this and this on submit is uh, we assign a function to it uh, called handle submit. And basically uh, it will, we can execute whatever we want uh, from the submission itself. Uh, so the thing is whenever like we update this, it won't uh, like we can't access this, right? Like whenever like even though we submit, we need the place to access it. So what we do in React is we make a state, new state, and then we assign that value to the value of the input itself. Okay, so okay, that's done now. Now, when I try to edit it, it won't uh, like tap, like it doesn't appear, like any word doesn't appear, like it doesn't type. So the thing here is we need to control that uh, typing type as well, type as well in the sense on change method. So the thing we have to do is there's a property called on change. And what I'm going to do is whenever like we change the value in the of the import, uh, we get we get the event object of it like uh, for the of the input, and we're going to do set title. Remember like uh, I mentioned the, the use state, we, we have the set title here, set method for the title. So we're gonna use the set title and from the e event itself, we're gonna mention dot target and then value of it. So now, whenever I type it, it works. And like, uh, whenever I like, stop writing it, the state now contains the, uh, this value, the, the value as well. So whenever we submit, we can simply access this title and uh, add that. So in this example, uh, now I will uh, uncomment the other code parts as well, apart from the last one. Now I want to enter book, tit book uh, title, description and author. Both I'll explain in a bit. Okay, uh, this can't find a description. So we for the description itself, we put another use state and description is a text area. And we assign the uh, value of it to description. We have another state, set state here. And now we have, we have done the same thing like uh, in the, uh, for the title uh, in the text area itself. So you got the end change and we set the description of the target value. Okay, that's done as well. Now, when it comes to author, like what I decided was like in the JSON file itself, like uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna assume that we're gonna get the author, authors from the API itself. Now, because of that, like we cannot just uh, mention, okay, these options are gonna be like, we can't, I, I didn't want to like hard code it. So what we have to do is we need to make a fetch call to this uh, API and we have to get this data and we need to load it into that uh, dropdown itself. So remember like we, we are using a use, use fetch uh, react hook here so we can uh, reuse it again here as well then we can assign the value to uh, the select okay let me uncomment this also i'll have to uncomment these code parts too so simply what i've done here is i mentioned the use state for author as well and then what i'm going to do here is uh, use a fetch request for the authors. Okay, so I'm not gonna like check the errors and things like this here, just uh, uh, just ease pending and authors. And then, uh, it's not defined. Yes, the thing is now, remember like uh, in, at the initial rendering, this authors is not there. So whenever like uh, I try to, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, re-render this, this won't, uh, this, this will show an uh, error as well as uh, also since this is a state, since this is a state value, uh, like I'll show it. So 
So let me actually regenerate the error that I got. Change this. We don't necessarily need that. Okay, so the thing was this, like, okay, so you get the data and you load it uh, to the select itself. But at initially, like, since our use state is empty, like empty in the sense it's uh, default, like it won't change the value, it will only change, like in the value won't change. So like, uh, in the sense, like if I, uh, uh, so the select, what happens in the select, I'll, let me open, let me make this bigger. And in the select, so you, you use a select for the drop down, and you just set the value as author, the you state here. And in the on change, you like use it similar to the, what happens in the text boxes, right? But the thing here is, uh, since the value of the author at first will be uh, empty, and unless like you change the value of the drop down, this uh, update, this won't be updated. So the thing is, if you like. Uh, so in order to like solve that issue in the sense, like let's say that you add a book here, but the problem is this, even though this is shown here, like this won't be updated because in the use state, uh, the author is empty. So you need to make sure that uh, that value is set here as well. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a use effect and there are we gonna check whether the use, uh, the author is uh, there, there is an author value or not and check also whether there's a, the author's uh, the data is retrieved or not. And after that, we're gonna set the author to the first value of the use state. Okay, then only like uh, now uh, the, I don't handle the spot here. Before making the submission request, I'm just gonna console of this. So what I have done is I have gotten the use states from the, here, like to an object. So I'm gonna make it book, I'm gonna call it book and I'm, I'm gonna load title, description and author and uh, I'm gonna console log it. So whenever like I try to type and uh, I like type something, sample desk and JRL talking and then I'm gonna add book. Then what's gonna happen is if I inspect it, it, uh, for in the handle submit itself, whenever I, I click the submission button, it will uh, give me this object. So this scenario, what happens is if I didn't do this, since the on change won't be happening for the first time, let's say that I added this, because until I uh, on change this, this thing won't be updated. I can set the uh, default value as well, but the thing is, I need the I need to get the authors in order to do that, anyways. So because if I uh, add it, uh, it's occurring. Why is that? Okay. Okay, that's for forms. You can look look into this. Uh, th these things are called like since we like use uh, state to handle the value of the form. These are called control components, controlled uh, form components. Uh, this can be a little bit difficult to like use in uh, say like big applications because yeah you you have to like use this every time. So we have like a third party package called uh, Formic. So that, that's actually really popular in the industry right now, because that basically you can easily like create form, uh, forms with it. Uh, maybe uh, check that uh, after like learning the basics of React. And then, okay. Now, so rather than console logging, now we need to make a post request to the, uh, to the API itself, like our JSON server mock API. So I'm gonna uncome in this code here. and this code as well. I'll explain what this history thing is. Okay, so what I'm here is doing is, uh, okay. So what I'm doing here is, 
I'm just mentioning the, so look, this is a post request. Now this is not similar to the use fetch uh, like we created earlier. That's only for the uh, getting data. So if you have like a post request like this, you can actually make another uh, React hooks for that. So in this case, fetch API, uh, like you put the normal uh, boilerplate. And as for the body, you put the book, like the object that we made make here. And then this will be uh, done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the history object. You can access the history object through use history uh, in React Router DOM. So like, see, even here, like they use React hooks uh, now. Now, 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 like even like libraries in uh, React, now they are adopting to the React hooks way. So like they are going away from class component uh, bit by bit. Uh, so in history, you can use push to change the URL. So whenever like we uh, like add the book, so what we want to do is we're gonna uh, update the URL. So then it will uh, load the home page. So let's try that out. Add book. Now you can see it will be added as well as it will be uh, loaded in the home screen as well. Now, if I go to the GB JSON, it's added as well. Uh, that's what I told you. Like uh, this JSON service is really good if you want to like practice or like practice uh, some code like this. Otherwise, you will actually need a backend to uh, do things like this. Okay. Now, okay. So that's uh, forms done as well. Uh, then we can do is we need to like uh, whenever like we click this, we need to like show another component as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file called book details. And also I'm going to handle the delete part in book details as well. So whenever like you go to the book details component, it's going to delete as well. So, okay. Uh, then details. Okay. Let me copy that to code. I'll explain uh, the code from the beginning. Okay, let me comment some of the code. No, let's just uh, stick with, okay. Let me make this bigger. All right, just ignore this part and just go into the return statement, right? So what, we, what, what do we want to do? We want to like show the individual book. Okay, note the list individual book. So in this case, like we have to make a fetch request again, but we have to access the ID. Okay, so in that case, what we need to do is, you know, like uh, parameter that URL parameters, right? We can access that uh, through from here. So, so what we need to do is, uh, whenever like uh, you click this, first you need to make these links. Remember, like I commented this line. So what I'm going to do is uncomment it. So now this part is wrapped with links. To come comment this as well. Now these are clickable. So as you can see, like whenever I click this, it will go to books dash one because I'm mentioning that include the para parameters for the book ID in the two itself slash books slash uh, book ID. Now this is another feature in uh, JavaScript uh, ES6. This is called template literals. Like normally what you do is uh, like to concat uh, 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 JavaScript, uh, I, like a JavaScript code. What you do is uh, you just uh, uh, put the string and you just put the plus sign and then you put the bracket, uh, you put the uh, value there. So basically, for example, I think, uh, yeah, this la something like this. But rather than this, you can actually uh, in JS ES6, you can use this template literals. Basically, you use backticks. I think uh, you might know that uh, after before the uh, in the keyboard itself, you, before the number one, uh, this backtick is there. You put the backtick inside that, uh, inside the string itself. You can mention dollar sign, and then you can put the curly braces, and you can mention the uh, variable JavaScript variable there. So remember, since we are like iterating through books here, we have the ID. Since ID is coming through 
the object itself. So we can actually pass that to the uh, user as, uh, as a param. So now we need to access this param in the component itself. So okay, going back to the book details, uh, book details now, apart from Bruce history, there's another one called use params. And I'm gonna simply use the use params here. You can see that. Uh, and this is basically like it, it returns an object as well because like you can pass many params. So, so you can, uh, you can uh, this basically destructure the ID itself. And where this ID name is mentioned is like, if you go back to the book list, uh, like we mentioned the ID here. So we can actually assign it to another name as well. But since it's ID, like it will be assigned to that. Okay, so going back, so we can, we are accessing ID from here. And now in the use fetch, rather than like asking for all the books, we are making dash and give, uh, we are putting like dash after the books and we are putting the ID there. So that basically returns only the records for the uh, books, uh, the, that book, particular book itself. Also like I use the uh, history as well, because uh, for the delete, delete method, I need that. Uh, now, it's one thing that we, ha we haven't actually done. So remember like, uh, we need to route this. Now, this component needs to be shown in the specific route. So whenever like you click this, you go to books and dash one. So like depending on this, we need to show the book details page, book details component for it. So we have to go to the app JS again and then we have the i'll just copy that part that route to okay so you got the route path books and you mentioned the param remember id okay and then you render the component that you want so book details i have to import it Now, 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 since that we have set up everything in the other side, it just loads uh, right away. So what happens is whenever like you go to this route uh, with uh, param ID, uh, that book details page, book details component, book details component access that ID, send a request uh, through to uh, books API and then get the data, data for that particular book. And when that book is there, it's basically, uh, showing this uh, data. So simple as that, like uh, similar to like other components we use, it's the same structure here. So since the timeout is there, loading message will, uh, loading will be shown and then only uh, like after the spending and everything is uh, figured out and the data will be shown. As for the delete, what we have done here is we have put a button with on click and you put an event there for handle click and handle click is uh, handled here. And you use another fetch request to the, do that uh, with method delete. And then you mention uh, the book ID here. You make a fetch request to books, the book ID. And then after that's done, completed, we are making a history push to uh, the home page again. So that's why the history uh, use history is uh, uh, used here. Okay. Uh, Again, now let's refresh. Let me go to the home. So, let's say I want to delete this title. If I delete it, it will go back to the home page, and now that title, that uh, the, that thing we created was deleted. All right, and then. Also, we can do like uh, some small stuff like uh, show a not found, not found page uh, if this uh, if it's uh, incorrect uh, if this if it's a route that is not uh, matching to the parts that we are mentioned in the app. So I'll just quickly add it. Not found component. It's not like any uh, difficult component. It's just with the class name we just saying saying this page cannot be found and we giving a link to back to home page as well. So we just have to uh, add that to the app as well. So in it, what we can do is gonna add another route here. 
I'm gonna put not found component. And for as for the path here, I'm gonna put star sign. Star sign means uh, apart from any 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 other paths uh, than this. So I can make path had an it path ticket may component execute can again. So then if I say I put say one, two, three, or something like that, then it will show the not found component. So that's how you can uh, uh, do the routing part. Okay, uh, that's. I think that's actually the app uh, done. Uh, okay, so now, now I think uh, yes, I think you guys can have an idea about it. But uh, I'm I'm kind of pretty unsure about the form structure because I had to like go through it like really fast because that 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 can be a little bit difficult to understand so i would uh, suggest you guys to like look into that a little bit after the session because uh, with the time constraint i had to go through with it because i think uh, i need at least another 30 minutes for the what you call the q a session as well okay so then uh, yeah that's it uh, actually for the application itself so we learned uh, about like how uh, the basics of uh, react as well as two react hooks use state and use effect there's actually more but these two are like the most prominently used one there's another one like use call use context i didn't uh, incorporate into the, uh, incorporate that into this uh, application but i will explain it in the documentation level so like uh, basically like rather than like we should be using uh, this uh, json mock database what we normally do is we make api request to the backend itself so then we have we are like uh, working on it like working on it in the sense uh, we get the data and we show it like that also like uh, as for like uh, explaining about uh, reusable stuff so remember like uh, for use fetch one like since we are like using this every time we make this as a custom react hook and uh, since it has like its own logic and everything we can like reuse it very easily like even the ease loading errors and things like that we can handle it uh, very easily and for as for like delete and submission we can actually do the same thing for that as well like i didn't do it in this one because it was used only one time both were used only one time only fetch was used uh, multiple times and like yeah components uh, like even for this uh, uh, this book item pages these are like reusable as you can see like uh, i only made one uh, book list and i just uh, iterate through the books there so if you actually actually if you have a like, like i mean it's not a realistic uh, scenario but let's say that you want this to be a, a component uh, itself you actually you can make this part to another component as well then you can uh, like you can call this not book, 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 uh, book or something like that then you can uh, render book component uh, inside this and if you want uh, like th then it encapsulate that uh, logic into that another component too rather than like uh, having the whole book list in the same component. Yes, then is there any other things I should clarify? Yeah, so like I only use prop types only for this uh, component. So you can actually like use this for other other components where prop is used. For example, here you can check whether book is uh, matching an array or not. Also, you can mention whether this is required or not as well. So if you're like having an issue like in the uh, development level you can uh, see here in the console itself uh, yes okay going back to the documentation now if i go to the react hooks itself so there's actually a couple of uh, rules here you can actually look into them later on so it says only call hooks at the top level, not just hooks, even uh, like, yeah, basically React hooks, uh, use state and things like that. You only call it in the top level. You don't uh, normally like uh, use it like after, after this, as you can see here, uh, you use the everything uh, in the top level and then you, move, you, you do the other code. And also another thing, like you, you don't call uh, hooks inside loops, condition and nested functions. And uh, because that can basically, since like uh, more logic is there, like rendering uh, logic is there, sometimes it can break the app and uh, like uh, have memory leaks for from it. Uh, yes. So then, other other than that, there's like simple uh, best practices that you have to use. Okay. 
then we did this part building your own hooks means cust doing uh, creating custom ones we actually did the custom one by uh, creating the use fetch uh, custom react hook using uh, use state uh, logic and then also the hooks api reference this part is actually mentioned uh, what what are the other react hooks are there so like actually like i so i told you like uh, use context is another uh, basic hook uh, dimension it won't be like used as consistently as the other two but uh, will be used as well others are like uh, optional ones or not optional but you you, might, you will use it but uh, like uh, this uh, i don't think uh, like i didn't uh, want to like incorporate the, those stuff into this as well because it was difficult for, for me to like explain even these concept uh, within the time, given time period so i'll uh, i'll quickly go through the use context because it's somewhat uh, useful because okay okay so you you see these props right like imagine like you have this prop here in the home like let's say it's a variable or something like that but you want to use it in the book details itself so it's actually like nested nested into like a couple of uh, components so what you have to do is you have to like uh, pass that into the book list and then from book list and then you have to pass it to the uh pass it again okay yeah in this case you can't pass it because it's it's uh it's, a, it's not a component so you get the idea so you have one uh, value in the top level but you want to use it in a nested level so let's say you have to so in that case you have to pass it from component to component so that can be somewhat like uh, not uh, inappropriate sometimes because uh, so ba basically it means that if you're having a variable in the top level means you are using it in multiple components again outer level like a mockery state like a mockery variable like a use karna wala udhaar ekna se team make a can happy mockery web application like a mockery light team dark team like a use karna wala api ek ek anu ek anu api styles venas karna wala gena api udhama level like a tia gena inna api hama कंपोनेंट एक टेट पास करने का इच्छा रहा एक ऐने एक इनप्रोप्रिएट नहीं एक ऐने मैं एक इच्छा रहा एक ऐने बेस प्रैक्टिस है नहीं मेरे एक निश्चय आप इटे करांडा पुलान देते हैं ना दिस समथिंग कॉल्ड यूज कंटेक्स्ट सो व्हाट यूज कंटेक्स्ट इस दस इस सो आई कल सी दिस एग्जांपल सो दिस एक्चुअली uh and then you set the uh, default value for it and then you say const theme context right uh and in order to like provide this to the other components you have to wrap the components with the theme context itself so you are assigning this values to it, value to it context value to it and then you are providing through a component theme context uh, provider and uh, like uh, you can change the value from here now inside that now this is there's only toolbar here like you can uh, put every other component like the components that you want to like uh, use the context uh, actually you you don't use you, you don't use the word use you say consume the context so the the components that you want to consume you put it inside the providers can provider like a context like atule dana ara components tika okkoma apita e atule nikan hari use wenawa nan team context ekey thiyena file ekak file ekene value ekak so what we do is in in order to uh, consume that consume that use that inside the component itself uh, these are actually like separate components so don't get uh, uh, don't worry about that a lot so these are like basically just uh, think of these as in different files so in theme button you can see you can use use context uh, react hook to access the theme context the provided theme context in the app level and you can use that value and you can apply the uh, style and uh, yeah you can change the provider value uh, depending on what happens in at the top level and depending on that value that, that remember like we are passing the value here no? so if this is conditionally rendered so depending on this value like uh, the other components are dependent on that so in the themed button it check for whether the uh, background is uh, it applies the light and dark background depending on the theme context value so like in situations like that you can use uh, use context 
look into that as well so that's basically like uh, when you have like uh, state where that you need to like use it in multiple bases you use context uh, that's for the that's the use case otherwise like if it's passing from like one to like three comp three or four components is fine but uh, like in big application there can be like state that is that in the very top level that you need, might have to use it in very uh, nested levels so i don't know whether most of you guys heard of that this this actually state manager uh, packages that you can use to uh, like manage the state uh, very well so for example there's something called redux that's actually a very another uh, complex uh, scenario uh, so you can use redux to uh, like rather than using use states rather than like using use states you have something called reducers and uh, state in that and this uh, concept in that called store stores so store is something like uh, uh, a state uh, it has like every state of the component so you just uh, access it uh, from your each of the component itself but the thing is like it's somewhat very it's very complex so in order to learn that you need to further you need to first uh, learn these part first and uh, yeah then what else uh yes then that's it like uh, like in in your spare time look into these other uh uh react hooks as well for example the, this use reducer concept is actually uh you might need it uh, when you're like re learning uh, redux uh, as for use callback use memo things are like related to another concept called memoization uh which basically means like uh, depending on props you either not uh, like uh, execute the com uh, uh, the functions and you don't uh, you only run functions depending on the props itself so that's like performance uh, optimization uh, related uh, reactors you would use uh, th there's uh, other stuff as well so yeah in actual applications you might you will only use use state and use effect uh, like almost every time you will have you might use them use context in scenarios like that uh, what i explained like uh, setting a theme variable or something like that uh, yeah then that would be it for the main uh, demo, de demo for the uh, demo of the application so like uh, so this like we can go to the questions and answers uh, not now yes mr himash uh Okay, uh, let me, I think the link is in my mail. Uh, so now is the time for your questions. Yeah. Uh, while in this Q&A session, uh, the participants can give their feedback about this session using the link that provide, provided in the chat box. Uh, so, Mr. Himash, shall we move on to the questions? Yes, let's go. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, first, we have uh, what are the design patterns we can apply on React JS? Yeah, uh, it's like this. Like as I've said, uh, what are the design patterns uh, we can apply on React JS? So basically, React is as I've said, like the front end layer. It doesn't basically handles any back end uh, part of the application so basically like think like this yeah, like you everyone knows uh, like what mvc means right so in mvc uh, basically like you can compare mvc's view to react basically like uh, that side of uh, is handled in uh, through react uh, so i hope uh, that uh, that is answered yes mr Himash. okay uh, the next question we have uh, what are Gatsby JS and Next JS? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Gatsby and uh, Next JS. They, these two are actually like uh, based on React itself. But the thing is, purpose of them is a little bit different. For example, Gatsby, uh, it's something that you use to create static websites. In the sense, like think about like web web app, web apps, websites not web applications where you don't use any database or any backend backend stuff 
uh, you use uh, Gatsby because it's really pow powerful as well as it's like super fast. Uh, when you think about Next.js, uh, Next.js is something like it's it's called uh, it's considered as a framework uh, because it's uh, somewhat very uh, uh, it has a set of tools and uh, the main part of it part of it is this this two things called client side rendering and uh, server side rendering. So what client side rendering does is like basically it uh, loads the JavaScript and things in the browser itself, whereas in server side, basically it loads from the server and then it brings uh, that part, the initial loading uh, to the browser. So using Next.js, you can actually achieve the, the server side rendering because it, it's inbuilt uh, in the app itself. Basically, like we use cre create React app to like get the get the app where like everything is set up right uh, like if you are like using a server-side rendering uh, if you want to like implement a server-side rendering with this one we have to like make a lot of config and uh, it can be actually a little bit, a little bit complex but uh, it, like next year is like uh, that's where like ne next year comes in uh, it automatic it automatically in the sense it has like pre-configured stuff so you can use uh, server-side rendering through it so it's actually becoming a little bit popular now so once you actually like look into all the react stuff uh, maybe you can look into it it's somewhat uh, like it's basically like i, I think uh, if you're only like uh, doing like full stack applications i think it's very really useful because uh, like i think node.js uh, node.js like is uh, you need node.js knowledge for that as well yeah uh, i think thank you very much. Uh, i think uh, you have explained something about the next question too uh, but i will uh, uh ah yeah uh well you mean the vata server yeah yes. i think uh so you got you got the point like server side rendering uh and client side rendering so what we actually did was client side rendering in order to achieve server side rendering we need to actually like make some changes to this which can be like uh, so, somewhat of, like it's not difficult but you can do it uh, but next is actually like a good example for it that because it automate it uh, like has it's uh, it's already like has its set of tools and it's already pre-configured so you can uh, use it and like there's pros and cons to these both of these like you can actually like uh, check about that and depending on the application itself uh, people use uh, the server side rendering uh, rendered react uh, application or so client side uh, next we have uh, what are the methods used for styling in React projects? And what are the pros and cons of them? Yes, uh, good question. Uh, so basically it's like this, React styling can be another uh, part of a section, like it can be another session it, because it, it's a somewhat big topic. So like uh, briefly saying, like remember like we did in, inline styling as well as uh, like styling through the style sheet itself. But there are like other, uh, ways like uh, there's something called CSS modules. So what that does is it, it, it uh, like, remember, like I told you, like if you uh, have like a separate uh, CSS file for a component and you import it and you accidentally like, oh, you can override the uh, parent classes as well. But whereas in CSS modules, you can have like uh, classes which are like uh, independent uh, to other, other, other classes and you can like embed into that your own component, which uh, actually makes it like very reusable as well. So like you can even like copy the same thing and you can use it on another project. And also another example would be style components. There's something called style components. You can uh, check that as well. So yeah, I think uh, CSS modules are the uh, most uh, used ones. Okay, Mr. Himash. Uh, next we have, uh, what is the difference between React.js and Next.js? Uh, I think uh, I covered that in the earlier yeah. uh, uh, answer as well. So uh, it's basically, uh, yeah, you just continue. Yes. Uh, what are the best techniques to save development time with React.js? Yeah, it's, well, it's, you can, you can, it just, it just means that uh, like, there's actually a lot of uh, NPM packages uh, around. So, what you can do is like, uh, if you're like uh, building, uh, for example, forms, like rather than like writing on your own forms, you can like use a third party package as well as uh, for styling. Like you can include something like React Bootstrap or like this material as well, 
you can use those components to like build your uh, comp like uh, React app very faster. Uh, and also you can like think about think of it, it like this. Uh, so so let's say that you are working on multiple projects, and if you like let's say create components which are like reusable. For example, use fetch, like the re custom React hook that we did. So you can actually use that into another uh, project as well. So let's say that you put the time to uh, make everything reusable in one project. That means you save time in the other projects by using the same reusable components. I hope that answers that. Uh, then, what are the most customizable React components libraries out there? Uh, yeah, there's actually a lot. Uh, for example, let's uh, take uh, a UI library like React Bootstrap. So basically, like just like uh, what we do with the uh, classes, like we can add that uh, variant. Uh, let's, say, let's take a button in uh, React Bootstrap and in React. Uh, React, but uh, the button like you can apply the classes like variant and sizes and things like that. In uh, for Re React, there's actually a component uh, the package called React Bootstrap, which you can import uh, like you can you can install in the uh, for your project itself, and you can use the component inside that. And uh, let's say it has a button. It has a component called button. So just like we use the components inside this inside this application, like we can get the button from the React Bootstrap package and you can pass the props to that. And like uh, prop, props in the sense, like what size you want, the color, color of the button you want, uh, like something similar like that. Uh, what are the more, like uh, customizable in the sense like, like that. So you have like more UI related, there's actually a lot of uh, UI related packages like material, uh, yeah, things <laughs> like that. Uh, how do we identify which state belongs to which component? Yeah, I I, I think uh, which state belongs to which component. So it's like this. I I think that uh, answer is like uh, he's, he's mentioning that uh, he's having like trouble maintaining every state. Uh, like there's like a lot of state in the application itself. So yeah, so in that that times of cases, like we can use like something like Redux to. Uh, manage the state a little bit better. Also, you can use context as well, but if uh, the state is like getting out of hand, you can use uh, a state manager uh, like Redux. Yes. Uh, next, what are the best practices when developing with React? Well, there's actually a lot, uh, like, as I said, like we, we went through with it, like when you like go through the React documentation, so they still don'ts and do's, for example, like use state. I told you guys to like mention, use the uh, set method of the use state rather than like write in the state it's still, itself, because that can lead to like odd behaviors in the application. Like that, uh, like you have to follow those uh, practices as well as uh, just not, not, this is not applicable to just React. So. Like like core formatting and uh, things like. Also, you have to consider about the reusability as well. Like rather rather than writing the same component again and again, you can like make it reusable, and uh, use it. Things like that. Uh, like uh, remember, like related to the use hooks, uh, there was some there was a section called rules of hooks, and you have to like follow them uh, when you are like using uh, React. Okay, Mr. Uh, next question about. Uh, life cycle method. Uh, so yeah. please explain about life cycle methods. Yes, so simply like uh, what life cycle methods, like mainly that uh, uh, that is actually applicable to the class component itself because in class components, we have uh, like, remember like in through use effect, we control uh, what, the comp what it should do at the initial rendering, as well as what it should do uh, after that specific uh, uh, propose updated as well as uh, for, for it rendering it for render for, for the first time uh, like only for the rendering for the first time so in class components you have like several comp several uh, functions like component uh, component did mount component should update and things like that you can actually manage that through use effect itself so the life cycle method is actually like uh, when it comes to react hooks actually you only like have use effect to uh, like worry about that rather than uh, using like all the life cycle methods in class components so maybe yeah. if you if you want to like uh, learn more about them the, then you'll have to research on that uh, through the class components 
something pretty much uh then what is the difference between a library and a framework can you explain uh, the second point again on the yeah, first sure thing yeah sure thing so it's like this uh so as i said like uh, react the case is a little bit different because some people actually consider react as a library some people as a framework so library is like this library can have like set of functions like helper functions and things like that we can just use it in our application to like uh, do some like small stuff whereas framework it basically gives us the whole thing like we can like implement everything from it also it gives you a structure on how you do it as well so so that i hope that answers the question and going back to the react topic why react is considered as a library the thing is remember like for routing we had to include another package called react router dom whereas in angular you don't have to actually do that it, it has its own uh, routing uh, in a, inbuilt in that thing same as uh, view like for those kind of reasons why it's why uh, react is considered as a library uh, i hope that, i hope that answers uh, his question Yes, Mr. Mas. I also think. Uh, can you explain more about virtual DOM? Uh, I think uh, you have explained something about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, no, it's fine. I can ex explain again. So it's like this. Uh, virtual DOM is uh, so you got the real DOM, right? You got the document object model uh, of the UI. So the, in the traditional apps, what happens is like whenever you decide, you know, you do manipulate something. it basically reloads the whole thing but in when it, uh, the in react what it does is like this something called virtual dom which is like a visual representation of the real dom itself and if uh, like let's say like a component is updated react updates the virtual dom and then the virtual the updated virtual dom compares with the previous virtual dom and then uh, it detects what are the changes there it there is and only those changes are updated in the uh, real dom itself uh then can react be adapted with languages like typescript absolutely we can uh like typescript uh, uh like we can enable typescript we can actually add it and uh, use it uh in react like in angular i think typescript is uh, already there so we have to use typescript anyway uh but react uh, it's optional you can either use it or not yes uh is learning redux depreciated because of react context api no not at all because uh use like there's some things that you can do with context like let's say that you have like massive amounts of uh, like variables and things like that so we can't actually like have like providers like stacked into our application like uh, what i shown in the example for like one no sim one simple one or two uh, ex things it, you can use it for example like something like theme because theme you use it in every component whereas uh, redux what you can do is you can for specific even for like small small stuff you can actually have you can use it as a store and then uh, use it so in that case you won't actually use uh, a lot of use state in that uh, when you like look into a redux redux related tutorial you might understand it uh, perfectly uh then we have uh, can we do react coding on dreamweaver oh uh i'm not actually quite sure about that but i think uh, we should be able to because it's just we just edit the page uh, through you no know, through the id you know since like i use a text editor like uh, react visual code you can do it but i'm not sure about the preview part but yeah i think you can do the code edit part in dreamweaver yes but uh, i don't think like lot of people use dreamweaver now Okay, import a component into its parent component. Do we import them into the app dot js file only every time? Uh, do not we import the component into a parent? Oh, you mean uh, why I? Uh, okay, okay, I understand what this means. so it's like this uh, like i didn't had a lot of components in this thing no? so because of that uh, i used every component i created in the route itself so i think uh, he must have like uh, so the thing is this yes i used every component imported in the route uh, in the app js because 
I used the uh, uh, route components there, but it, it it's not like that. Uh, like you you can like you it doesn't say that you have to import everything in AppJS. No, like you can import other components uh, in other files as well. Okay, it's just because that uh, in this example I had I had to like import everything in the AppJS because I had the route uh, like the browser the router part section was in there. Okay, Mr. Uh what about using GraphQL instead of API calling? Yes, uh, you can do it. Uh, like, uh, like with consistent, uh, consisting like this, you can actually uh, create a GraphQL server. Like, for example, the Express GraphQL server, and uh, you can uh, actually uh, use something like JSON server or something like that to mock as well. Or if you're like, if you're hoping to like do a production uh, or something like that, uh, you can uh, use it. So instead of uh, fetch, that, that, I mean, like you can use fetch to uh, call uh, GraphQL request as well. Otherwise, I think there are a couple of good uh, NPM packages in the uh, industry. Uh, in the uh, you can ch check and uh, use in your application. Yes, you can absolutely use GraphQL. And I, uh, if you, if it's a big application, I would uh, recommend you to use GraphQL. In, uh, yes, because it's really good. Okay. Uh... How are we getting started with React Materials user interface? Can you briefly explain how to use Material component? So it's like this. So simply you just install Material. I haven't personally used Material, but I, I assume that it's uh, similar to what we use in React Bootstrap as well. So let's, let's actually look into screenish still shared so we can actually go to material material react so basically material ui so material the, the material ui is based on uh, material and it's a like a ui framework for react and uh, so basically you use install npm install you install the package into your application okay so like see this like simply you use like components from it, like for example, button. You use the button component and you simply like uh, render it in your application and through props itself, like rather than mentioning classes, like primary class, secondary class, you can use the prop to uh, say what color you want or uh, what are the sizes and things like this, similar to uh, React Bootstrap. So let me go to this component section and let's see, now the button is there. So if you want a uh, like a uh, content, uh, so if you want a secondary colored one, you can just say secondary in the in the prop itself, rather than saying primary. And if you want a disable, you can just pop, pass a disable prop. So it's very easy to like uh, use it like that. You just only have to install it and go through the documentation and uh, check what are the features in every component and the things you can pass. Uh... Can we create a project using only React? Uh, look, we can, but the thing is without a data, like if, if it doesn't have like any, like uh, uh, it doesn't have a need for database, yes, we can. Like uh, like if you can do something like Gatsby, I think it's even better for static websites. Uh, so this is the final question. Uh, can you briefly say a few words about the demand for React JS? in sri lanka uh, i would say compared to others is really high like uh, i like view is there a little bit angle is there as well but react it's, uh, it's there a lot like even for front end as well uh, as well as even for every full stack job i think uh, you need to know at least somewhat uh, of react so the thing is this like uh, just go through with this uh, like uh, react that the basics and everything uh, what i can recommend you guys is uh, the the person I follow in the in the, the for guides is someone called Net Ninja. Net Ninja. Okay, so just check that guy out. And even I based this component on uh, based this exercise on is one of his uh, uh, work. So the thing is uh, the, the explanation skills of him is really good. So follow the basics, and then once you master the React hooks and the functional components and things like that, uh, go into Redux. And then once you look into that, it's it's enough for the industry. Like inter, if you want to like go to the intern level or junior level, it's enough uh, because I haven't actually seen like uh, like pre, like 
uh, companies especially asking for like next js requirements things like that i think unless it's a, like a specific project or something like that but i don't think it's like prominently used in sri lanka so just you just learn uh, react js the basics and master the basics uh, and use uh, and learn redux as well at least a basic level of redux awesome so much uh we don't have any other question and i think uh, mr himash gave very clear clarifications on the questions and i hope all of you got the clear answers on your questions uh so it was a very productive and informative session i am sure you all agree mr himash we are grateful to you for taking time out of your schedule and conducting this webinar today so mr himash thank you very much thank you sudeep and thanks uh, for the your every the council member like uh, who participated to uh, the, uh, organize this event and thank you all for listening to me as well uh, yeah uh, and we would like to thank sana commerce and ism apac for their support for this session especially head of hr of ism apac mr samita lienegi for your quick response on our invitation despite having a busy schedule and for your continuous support on behalf of the cssa i would also like to thank everyone who attends this webinar for their active participation now we have reached the end of today's event i hope you enjoyed it and gained something new stay connected with the cssa of university of kalani to experience amazing sessions like this Thank you for joining. Good night. Stay safe.